Hi, this is Robert Quimby, and I'm going to tell you about Jupyter Notebooks. So this right here is a Jupyter Notebook. If it looks to you like it's just an ordinary web page, it's because on some level it is just a web page. But it's a special web page that has a connection to a notebook server. And what this means is that I can enter code into this notebook, send it to that notebook server. It will evaluate the code there and then send back the results. So this is a powerful interface. You can display information and you can run code right in this web page. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, Jupyter Notebooks, just introduce you to the basic concepts here, and I'll show you uh, what you can do with them, uh, how you can open a notebook, how you can close a notebook, different ways for doing that, and uh, get you started on, on using Jupyter Notebooks. So one of the first things to note is that notebooks are divided into different pieces called cells. So you can see this blue border here. This is telling me I'm looking at one cell right here. This is another cell down here. This is another cell. And there are different types of cells for different types of input. So one of the most basic types of input is called markdown. So this first cell here happens to be in markdown. And the way these Jupyter Notebooks work in general is that you actually type in something that looks like this. right? You type in some information here into the cell, and then you run the cell. And you can do that different ways. One, there's a little button right here that says run. You can click on that, and that'll run the cell. Uh, you can also, if you're just looking at this information here, you can hold down the control key and hit enter, and that'll also run the, the command. Or you can hold down uh, shift and hit enter, and that'll run it and go to the next line. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some keyboard shortcuts in just a minute. But for now, we're talking about the, the markdown. And so you can see what this does is it can display text, it can display images, uh, you can make links to other documents out there. So it's kind of all the basic stuff you, you see on a normal web page you can do with Markdown. Uh, it's called a Markdown cell because that's actually a special language that you can use in these cells. So if I look at this right here, you can see that I have provided a link to a different web page. And so this is how you do that at Markdown. You put some square brackets and then you put some uh, parentheses and the parentheses contain the link. The square brackets contain the message you want to associate with that link. And when I run the cell, I get this link right here and I don't have the URL printed. But if you look at the bottom here, you can see that it tells me that this is a link. So I can click on this here and this might be a good idea for you to follow along with. And you can get the documentation for markdown cells. So this will tell you the basics. You can do different headings um, and different nesting. Uh, and there's the headings. And of course, the key thing is that you can do code. Um, before we move on to the code cells, I want to note that you can do a lot of different things with these markdown cells, including displaying beautiful equations like this. So this equation here, I'll put this in a cell by itself. And this is how I wrote that equation. So I'm using a language here called LaTeX. And I type in just regular LaTeX commands inside these dollar signs here. And then when I run this cell, it gets converted into a beautiful equation. And one more thing you can do in a markdown cell is you can just type in normal HTML. If you happen to know uh, web programming and you know how to make uh, websites using HTML, you can put in your familiar tags, your paragraph, and your, uh, your links uh, using HTML if you want. Okay, but the power of Jupyter Notebooks really comes from the fact that they have these code cells. So this is a different type of cell now. You'll notice there's this little input marker here waiting to be run. And in this cell, I can actually type something like x equals 3 plus 4. And then I can type another command. This is now Python that I'm typing in. I can type print x. And now if I run this cell, look at that. It tells me the answer, 7. So how did it do this? It took this information in this cell and it sent it to the Jupyter Notebook server. And it was run there in the Python session running there. And then the answer was given back here as 7. So it's important to know that the Jupyter Notebook server doesn't really know how you have your, your, your cells organized on your notebook. So whatever you do in one cell is still saved in the memory when you go to another cell. So if I here ask what is x, I can print x again and it's still 7. Or I could do something else with it, you know, I could add 5 to it. And we can see a new result there. So obviously there's a lot more you can do, but keep this in mind that you're able to input code. You can define variables, you can define functions, and that's all run on the Jupyter Notebook server and then just displayed in your web browser here. Okay, so you're gonna wanna get familiar with some of the keyboard shortcuts for working with uh, Jupyter Notebooks because 
you know, you, you don't want to have to be clicking the mouse a lot. It's much more efficient to be using your fingers here. So we already saw one. You can run a cell, as I showed you, by hitting Control and hitting Enter. Um, there are some other important ones to note. If you're in the command mode, which means you look in this, this border here is blue and you're not typing in a cell here. If you're actually typing in a cell, it's going to turn green here. But if you go back here, you know, you can press escape or just click on the margin here. Uh, and you type one of these keys. If you type A, for example, it'll add a cell here above. Or if you're here and you hit B, it'll add a cell below. Uh, if you want to delete it, you know, you can hit X. If you made a mistake, you can hit Z and it'll undo it. So make sure you know these, these different keyboard shortcuts here. And an important one to note is these M, Y, and R. So if you, if you have a cell right here, which is, say, a code cell, you notice this because it's got this input here, you want to change it to a markdown cell, you click on the side here and you type M, and boom, now you've got a markdown cell. Or you can hit Y, turn it back into a code cell, or you can hit R. Now this is for raw input. It may look like it's a markdown cell, but if you type something in it and you run it, it doesn't change. It's just raw input. So note that this can happen because sometimes you might be entering, or think you're entering code into a cell, and it turns out you're just typing on the side here, and you accidentally hit R, and it takes your code cell and turns it into a raw cell, and then it won't work. So you can type Y to get it back into a code cell. Okay, so let's move on now to how you actually open one of these notebooks. You know, I started this tutorial with this notebook already open, but how do you do that? How do you view one of these files? So a key concept in doing this is to, to realize that you need actually two programs to view a Jupyter Notebook. One is you need your web browser, because that's where you're gonna be looking at the, the information and editing, inputting information. But then you also need this notebook server. You need a sec second program which is running that can run the Python code and then send you back the results. So you gotta open up two programs to do this. So there's a couple ways that you can open a notebook uh, depending on how you have your server set up. So the easiest thing is if somebody else sets up a server for you, a notebook server, and has that running on a machine that you can access. So if that's the case, all you need to do is point your web browser to that machine. So there's a Jupyter Notebook server that I have access to online. So I'm gonna just go to that. If I go to jupyterhub.ssu.edu, it'll take me to this website, uh, which is actually a Jupyter Notebook server. Now, different people can access this, so we actually call this a Jupyter Hub. And on a Jupyter Hub, you can do things that you can do on a, on a regular Linux machine, like you can open up a terminal and run commands, but you can also go and locate one of your notebooks. So I'm gonna go through this directory tree here, and I'm gonna go in my tutorials, and I'm gonna look for my Jupyter, and there you go. So now I have another instance of this Jupyter Notebook open here. This is on a different server. So this first one that I was showing you here, this one happens to be running on my local machine. I'll show you how you can do that in a second. And this one now is running on the Jupyter Hub. But it's basically the same thing for me as the end user. I can type in some code into this cell here um, and run it, and I'll get an answer. Now it happens that that calculation is now done on some computer that is not here in front of me. It's actually sitting on campus somewhere, but I can still get the answer here in my, my web browser. Okay, so that's one way to open it up. If, if someone's already gone through the trouble and set up a, a Jupyter Hub for you, that's great. If you don't have that and you wanna run it on your own machine, there's another way you can do this. So I'm running here on a Mac and I've got this little window here. So this is a terminal program and in there, I'm actually running my Jupyter Notebook server on my machine. So I've got a, my web browser running, but I've also got the second program running on my machine as well. So what I'm actually gonna show you now, I'm gonna hide this for a second. I'm gonna show you how to log out of a notebook the, the proper way. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna relaunch my notebook server just to show you how the process works. So here I am, this is the, the, the instance on my machine. You can notice here by the, the web address, it's localhost. You can tell that this is actually a web page that's being served from my machine. I'm gonna to go to the file menu here and I'm going to close and halt. So it'll actually shut down that particular notebook. And then I'm gonna go back to this uh, terminal window here and I'm gonna hit Control C twice. Control C, it'll ask me if I wanna shut it down. I'll just hit Control C again and it's gonna shut down my server. So now I can't run a, a Jupyter Notebook on my, I can't open a Jupyter Notebook directly on my machine. 
Okay, so if you have the software to run a Jupyter Notebook uh, server on your machine, here's how you launch a Jupyter Notebook. So you got your Xterm open here, your terminal, and first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you activate any kind of software environment that you need. So if you're using Conda, you wanna first Conda activate and whatever package that you're using. I'm using um, STENV and I've already got that set up so I don't need to run that command. But make sure you do because you want to make sure you're using the right stack of software. Okay, so after you do that, I usually recommend you CD into your home directory and then you can simply type Jupyter Notebook. Two words and you open that. You run that command, I should say. So what it does is it actually launches that notebook server, I'll bring this back up here, um, on your computer. So this terminal now is running that program, the notebook server, and you'll notice that it also automatically opens up what's called the tree here. So this is a way that you can now launch programs, um, specifically uh, Jupyter Notebooks, out of your web browser. So it, it automatically goes to localhost 8888 slash tree, and then you can find your notebook and launch it. And there you go, here's your notebook back up and running. So just one last point to hit, uh, you'll notice that before I brought this up, I, I halted the program running. And this is actually important to do when you're, when you're done with a notebook, if you just simply exit out, X out the window, that's gonna close the view of it on your web browser. But remember you got this other program running that's actually the notebook server where your data is stored. And you gotta tell that also to shut down. So when you close a notebook, the right way is to go to the file menu and to close and halt. If you're on a Jupyter Hub, you should have a couple options to do this. Again, you can go to the file menu. The name's a little bit different in this version, close and shut down notebook. Uh, or you can also go to uh, this tab here, which shows you what you have currently running. And you can actually just close that um, or actually shut down that directly. So hopefully this gives you some idea of what Jupyter Notebooks are and how to use them. And I suggest you go out and start playing around with them and enjoy.